All right. Boom. I'm back. Took a week off. Can y'all hear me? Can you see me? Yes? Yes? I'm not in my studio, I know. I'm not in my studio today. Nice to see everyone. Hope y'all are doing well. Wow, coming in quick. Coming in quick. That's great. Nice to see so many people on here. I'm going to wait while we populate the, the landscape a little more. It looks like we're uh, the number's jumping up pretty quickly. Hello, Rachel underscore Ovidia Art. I missed a few waves earlier. Esther Loop, Stra Art. There's the waves. Carol Snyder Art. Well, I skipped a week. What can I tell you? Um, I've been doing them every other week lately. Um, great. Nice to see so many people on here already. Okay. I'll wait another 10 or 20 seconds and then I'll explain stuff. Good to see people on here. I did not. Oh, <laughs> the little floaty heart. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Okay. Hello, and dadeburka.art. Hello from Russia. That's great. It's nice to see people from all over the world here. Tell me where you're from. Where are you from? I get people from Brazil a lot on here. Renee underscore Renee underscore Renee. Less is more, so they say. Okay. Um, Carol Snyder Art, not terribly refreshed, but um, I'm hanging in there. All right, um, the number keeps climbing, but I hate to keep y'all waiting. Oh, Istanbul, hello from Istanbul, hello in Ireland, hello in Paris, in Seattle. That's great, all over the fucking world, that's amazing. Ah, oh hi, I have, <laughs> coincidence, um, I'm at a friend's house who's from Ojai. Someone from Venezuela, Alicia Armini from Venezuela, that's Italy, unbelievable, wow. I forget, you know, I forget. Florence, Italy, someone else from Italy. <coughs> okay, it's time to get the party started. Oh, Tehran, wow. Sorry, these random uh, places just like uh, India, great. Um, so it's these, pla these random countries. It's crazy. I forget, you know, in this age, I just, it blows me away. I spend so much time in my own little world. Um, okay. Hull, England. Wow. Manchester, UK. A couple people from England. That's great. All right. So I'm going to stop announcing where you're from. You're from all over the world. That's great. I am doing something different today. I'm not in my studio. Obviously you can tell I am at, uh, the Cat Spring Art Collection in Cat Spring, Texas. It is not open to the public current. It's not currently open to the public. It's a private collection that I've been given access to. I'm standing out in front of it and I'm gonna flip the camera around and just show you some of the country side since I spent so much time in an urban setting. I'm gonna flip this really quick and on a walk. I think it's drizzling so I don't wanna get. So we're entering the front, okay? Okay, I'm back. So I'm gonna walk you into the building and um, I'm gonna talk about some of the artwork, excuse me for the hiccups. And uh, that's gonna be what we're gonna do today, something completely different, okay? So it's interesting though, it'll be nice to see some work in a clean, well-knit, proper space instead of my messy studio sometimes. So we're walking in. Again, this is the Cat Spring art collection in Cat Spring, Texas. It is not open to the public currently. Um, and um, so let me turn this around really quickly on me again. Okay, so now we're inside. We're in the foyer and it's a small library. This place is still sort of being, um, it's finished, but the, the I think the, the collector's intention and own, um, uh, the owner is sort of still envisioning how everything's gonna play out, but this is a really wonderful space. So let me tell you a little bit about it before we start, before I start doing the show and tell of specific pieces. 
This is primarily uh, this is primarily a uh, uh, a contemporary art collection of Texas-based artists, a lot of artists from Houston, a lot of artists from Dallas. The focus of the collection is Texas contemporary art in this building, although there are going to be, and I'm going to show you a couple of them, there are other artworks from uh, in this particular version or installation of the space, which I'm not sure if it's permanent or not, but uh, there are other artists who are not Texas-based who I'm going to point out. But the focus, I'm going, to, I'm going to show you the whole space, but I'm going to focus on just a couple of pieces for the length of brevity, and I don't want to go on too long. But um, yeah, so I'll focus on a few pieces, but I'm going to show you, I'll just talk, and you'll see it's, um, there's a few non-Texas artists in here, but um, a lot of Texas artists and some other stuff that'll be very familiar. So I thought it would be an interesting change of pace to show you a space like this, a clean well at space, instead of seeing the animal in the jungle known as me in my studio, in my messy studio for a change. And um, I'll talk, okay. So I'm gonna flip this around. We might have company, by the way. There's a bozo buddy of mine who lives out here who's uh, who might come and raid the fridge looking for beer or something. Okay, so here's the foyer. And there's big garage doors so they can load and unload large paintings and sculptures with ease. Um, here is the, okay, let's see if this door's open. I don't even know if this door's open. Oh, bingo. Uh, I'm not gonna really go in here a whole lot. Here's some storage racks, you know, for paintings. Very, stuff you'd see, stuff you'd see in a, um, Wow, that's cool. There's a little nightlight there. I didn't notice that. See that? Uh, there's stuff, this is similar to what you'd see in a gallery space or any other storage space. Anyway, and here is, here is the library shelf. They're still filling in the library with books, primarily art books here. There you can see someone showcased, that's me on the cover of that book right there. Uh, it's a beautiful art history book focused on 20th and early 21st century Texas-based artists. Some other great books. I'll just, this is a very overlooked um, Houston-based, Texas-based artist. Y'all should look this guy up. Incredible artwork. Who um, He died, I um, believe, in the late 80s, maybe the early 90s. So you should check this guy out. He was really great. Very, very overlooked. Um, you can see that, and that, that's pretty amazing. Uh, this is a book I haven't gotten to yet, Double Vision, which I'm going to start, I've got it, I'm going to work on it. Um, yeah, so let's go in. So, there's a little Bryce Martin print on the wall. Okay, and so let's enter the main the main building. And okay, let me turn this around for a second. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan around the entire space slowly and then I'm going to point out a few works and then focus in a little bit more extensively on a few more, okay? Sound good? Y'all good with that? Okay, cool. Oh, the number's ticking up, great. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of the room and I'm just going to kind of pan around slowly so you can sort of see. And some of you might recognize some of these artists and some of you might not. So once again, we're at the Cat Spring Art Collection in Cat Spring, Texas. Uh, this is not open to the public at this time. Coming up on one you might, that might look familiar to y'all. Okay. So, here is, um, I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to show you, this is a Joseph Boys print. Oh, um, this show was installed with the help of Tudor Mitroy 
Um, I didn't have anything to do with the installation, but he had a lot to do with it, along with the owner, who I think wants to remain semi-anonymous, although that's going to get harder to do. Okay, so there's Joseph Boys. Um, here's Dorothy Hood. The show was hung with certain, uh, uh, certain color relationships in mind. Dorothy Hood, look her up if you don't know her. She's a very important Texas artist, late 20th century Texas artist. Here is a Christopher Wool print. Um, and I know that this was bought out in Marfa, Texas at Indy Jacobs Gallery because I happened to be tagging along. Pretty amazing. Here's a friend of mine. This is a Ludwig Schwartz painting. Ludwig's a Dallas artist. And um, yeah, really wonderfully peculiar um, painting. And uh, I think, I mean, peculiar in the best sense of the word. I mean, I think that, um, I just think he has a wonderfully peculiar um, uh, sense of color and composition that's, that's very unique. Next to that is a very dear friend of mine who I've shown with his own Marceline McNeil painting. Um, another, again, t Dallas, Dallas-based artist, used to, used to be in Houston. There's a really, I don't know if you can tell on here, but if you look, there's this sort of feathered edge in the stain in the, around the edges of the painting, and it kind of almost hums and vibrates when you see it in a certain light. Um, I'm going to not talk too much about this one because I'm going to come back and talk about another one. There's a Vernon Fisher, Fort Worth artist, and my former major professor from graduate school at the University of North Texas. Another one of my professors, the amazing uh, Vincent Falsetta. This one's fun to zoom in on. I believe he's got a show up right now. It might still be up in Dallas at a conduit gallery. I actually saw it a couple of weeks ago. It was pretty amazing. Another Vernon. A little uh, Jeff Hippensteel. Here's something that feels very different, an Aaron Parazet. Um, uh, there's me. This is a painting called, I did this painting about five years ago, five and a half years ago. I showed it out at a gallery in Marfa, Texas originally. This one's called Feeding Off the Land Like an Animal. I got the title from a Cormac McCarthy novel that I was reading. And I had a really hard time recreating, um, there was that strange, almost pukish uh, yellow. I used a strange brand of fluorescent acrylic paint and cut it with some titanium white um, to, get that, to get that strange sort of color. And there's a lot of little hiccups and details in this painting. Um, um, I, I really, there's things about this painting that I like a lot that I haven't really done since, like that sort of uh, right justified set of black handlebars. And I just like the way that really weird stainy purple, bruised purple works with the uh, strange yellow, you know? Uh, you know, it's interesting as I look back on this painting, I realize what's changed in my work since then and what hasn't. Here's a really great painting by a Houston artist, uh, Bradley Curl, curated him and I curated him into uh, a show a few years ago. Really great, wonderful painting. Uh, sort of historic fauna, landscape-ish sort of painting, but done in such a wonderfully peculiar, unusual way. You know, when you look up close, you just see these really interesting, unusual moves in the work. Um, really, really like this painting. There was another one out in the foyer that we, that we ran by, the yellowish one. Um, yeah, and um, I'm going to flip this around really quickly. Yeah, and so, um, you know, there's a lot of these artists in here I know. I've shown with uh, se several of them, Marceline and um, Ludwig that I mentioned earlier. I've shown with them. We've done duo shows before. And then I've curated several of these artists into other shows too. So anyway, I want to focus in on kind of a masterpiece really quickly. Um, this is another 
uh, Vernon Fisher. Again, uh, learned a lot from this guy back in the day. Um, I was his last student before he retired. And this is, um, I'm pretty certain this is acrylic and oil on canvas. And when you spend a little time with this painting, you start to think of all the little multiple vignettes and characters that are in the chemical chart at the bottom, the periodic table chart at the lower left corner of it. And I think that um, it causes, um, <laughs> kind of causes your brain to explode when you think about it, especially the uh, solar system. And it's funny, it's, it's, it's dark. It's sort of, you know, you spend a lot of time with these different vignettes and you start to think about reflective thought and memory. And he does a lot of these sorts of paintings that, um, you know, he uses the blackboard as sort of a device. I, I particularly like the blackboard ones, although there were a couple other ones that I showed you earlier that weren't blackboards. But I think that they really have, um, I think they really offer a lot to look at. I think he's a very important not just Texas artists, but American artists, as are a lot of other people in here. Um, what do I want to jump to? Uh, let's see. What can I jump over to? Here's, I talked a little bit about the Marcelin over there. Let me talk a little bit about, here's another Vernon. That, this one's called XO, XO. So it's not the blackboard, but it's, um, it feels like sort of a, a blurred, a little bit like a blurred photograph, even though it's not. And um, just a really peculiar, you know, another thing that's really interesting about this piece that no one ever talks about is, you know, the fact that he works very achromatically, I think is a big, is a big plus in a lot of the work too, you know? Anyway, um, that's going to be about it. I think I'm coming up on, I like to keep these down to about 15 or 20 minutes. So... Anyway, um, I didn't want to go too long. I will scroll through quickly and see if there's any sort of questions that I can, that I can answer. You must show your work in Paris. We wait for you. Yeah, I'd love to show my work in Paris. You got some ideas? Uh, Cerise Violet. Okay. Uh, is it ever going to be open to the public? I don't know that. Uh, Alicia Ermini, not sure. There's Will with the fire. <laughs> uh, what's the name of this place? I've said it a couple times. I'm, I'm at the, uh, the Cat Spring Art Collection in Cat Spring, Texas. It is not open to the public right now. Um, but I figured I'd give you... I was able to pull a few strings and get in here and show it to y'all. So... Let me see if there's any other questions. Um, anyway, I thought it'd be a nice change of pace. The opportunity came available. Um, I would love for y'all to, um, I would love for y'all to uh, send me questions for the coming weeks about things you'd like me to, uh, about things you'd like me to discuss. So, greetings from Zurich. How amazing, cool. Well, yeah, you got a chance. I think this is, one last thing I'll say before I sign off, I think this is some of the best of uh, contemporary art going on right now by um, primarily living artists. If you take the, uh, the um, did I say boys earlier and I meant Albers? If you take the Albers print out of it, you know? Um, and it's a spectacular installation. So hopefully, if you didn't know some of these artists, hopefully you do now and you can look them up and look into them and learn more about them, okay? So that's going to be it for today, and I will um, catch up with you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye.